Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to MOOC NPTEL course on Bioengineering, an interface with Biology and Medicine. In the last week we have discussed about some of the basic properties of amino acids and proteins. Then we discussed about few tools and techniques which could be utilized to study proteins and at a much complex level of proteins at the proteome level. We talked about technology like SDS page, 2D electrophoresis, then we moved on to advanced form difference in the electrophoresis and then we talked about protein purification strategies such as chromatography based methods, gel filtration chromatography, ion exchange chromatography and affinity chromatography. From gel based protein work as well as from the chromatography based work, you are utilizing some property to separate the proteins or to purify the proteins, but you cannot confirm that this is the right protein which you have identified until unless you do a mass spectrometry based analysis. So, mass spectrometry has become very prominent and started playing a very strong role in the entire field of protein biochemistry and proteomics. And today we are mainly going to talk about mass spectrometry, the basics of it as well as mass spectrometry based proteomics. So, what is mass spectrometry? It is a technique for protein identification and analysis by producing the charged molecular species in vacuum and then their separation by magnetic and electric field based on the mass to charge ratio. This technology has become uh, increasingly in use in the proteomics field and now has become a method of choice for analyzing the complex protein samples for proteomic studies. In a mass spectrometry based uh, proteomics workflow, let us say first thing we are starting that we have a protein of interest which we want to analyze and that protein either you have purified it or you have excised a spot from the 2D gel or SDS page band and now you want to know what is the protein identification. So, in this workflow initially let us say you have the, the intact protein which you want to digest using enzymes like trypsin, chymotrypsin, lysine etcetera. Then you are generating the peptides, the proteolytic peptides. Now, these peptides could be further separated based on the liquid chromatography based methods. And then now you want to you have the proteins in solution form which you want to ionize and you want to now move inside the mass spectrometers. So, first thing is you want to use ionization source to ionize these molecules. Then you want to separate them in the mass to charge ratio using different type of properties of mass analyzers. And then in the process either you can use only one mass analyzer or you can use two mass analyzers accordingly you can do either MS or MS, MS based analysis. So, let us start with the first component of the mass spectrometer which is ionization source. The soft ionization is known for its ability to ionize non-volatile biomolecules while ensuring the minimal fragmentation and therefore, one could easily interpret the data. The most commonly used ionization methods include uh, electrospray ionization or ESI or matrix assisted laser desorption ionization method which is MALDI. Let us first talk about MALDI or matrix assisted laser desorption ionization method. It is one of the efficient process for generating gas phase ions of peptides and proteins for the mass spectrometry detection. In this there is a target plate which has a dried matrix and the protein sample which is exposed to a short intense pulse of uh, laser light and that is going to uh, generate these uh, ionized forms of these peptides which could be further analyzed in the mass analysis. So, here in this uh, image it is shown that the analyte or the protein of interest is mixed with the matrix which could be some aromatic compound, it could be a uh, different type of matrix could be used like alpha cyano 4 hydroxy cinnamonic acid or it can be 2 5 trihydroxy benzoic acid or DHB, it could be cinnapenic acid. So, the different type of uh, matrix which can be used to uh, crystallize this particular protein 
and now analyte and the matrix is dissolved in organic solvents which is now crystallized and uh, put on the metallic sample target plate on which now you are doing the laser bombardment and these ions now based on the mass to charge ratio could be further separated in time of flight tube. Let us now talk about another ionization method which is electrospray ionization or ESI. In ESI the ions are formed by spraying a dilute solution of analyte at the atmospheric pressure from the tip of a fine metal capillary and that creates a fine mist of droplets. These droplets they are formed in a very high electric field and becomes highly charged. So, in electrospray ionization the dissolvation of ions occur at atmospheric pressure and the mass analyzer is maintained at the lower pressure. So, by using this kind of differential pressure you are trying to move all these ions inside the mass analyzers. And during the moment these uh, evaporation happens which reduces the droplet size and now these become the charged droplets. These ions when they are entering inside the mass analyzer it results into the gas phase ions accelerated uh, through the analyzers towards the detector. So, these small droplets uh, from the solution forms are generated uh, that is known as the Taylor cone uh, which contain the peptide analytes and now the protons from the acidic solution they provide droplet the positive charge. So, that now it can move to the negatively charged instrument and both by using the differential pressure and the charge you are trying to move all these ions which are coming from the peptides uh, towards the mass analyzer and therefore, now you can uh, do the further separation using the mass analyzers. There are different type of mass analyzers available it can be time of flight or top tube, it can be ion trap, quadrupole, ion cyclotron resonance, orbit trap, magnetic sector. There are multiple options available for the mass analyzers. Uh, usually people want to utilize different properties of mass analyzers and therefore, they use in tandem. So, that is known as the hybrid uh, MS technology where you can use you know two different mass analyzers and utilize both of their property. For example, QTOF or quadruple time of flight is one of the hybrid configuration or you can use even tribrid technology like you know uh, for example, in orbit trap we have quadruple, we have orbit trap and ion trap that is the tribrid technology. So, let us look at you know some of the basic properties of these mass analyzers especially the popular ones like time of flight or TOF mass analyzer. The TOF mass analyzer it consists of the ion acceleration and the focusing optics inside the flight tube. It measures the mass to charge ratio of ions based on how much time it takes for the ions to fly inside the analyzer and how much time it takes to strike to the detector. So, you are using mass discrimination based on the flight time and the mass is exponentially proportional to the flight time. So, ions of lower masses are accelerated to the higher velocities here. You can see this in this diagram that you know laser is bombarded. Now, these ions are based on the mass to charge ratio they are flying inside the time of flight tube and reaching to the detector. Now, if you have two different type of time of flight tubes uh, that is the hybrid configuration you can make multi tof tof. So, in this case after the first uh, mass analyzer which is tof 1 there is a collision cell which will select the precursors fragment them further and then generate the uh, spectrum from those which could be uh, utilized to obtain the peptide sequence information. So, in this case uh, you are using two TOF tubes and then you are utilizing their properties to further separate uh, each one of these ions and their fragmentation pattern is obtained and this could be utilized to obtain the basic peptide sequences. Another uh, popular configuration is quadrupole based uh, mass spec. Uh, so, this mass analyzers uh, they use oscillating electric fields to selectively stabilize or destabilize the path of ions which is moving inside these uh, you know quadrupoles and then uh, they are passing through the radio frequency of this quadrupole field. So, this is one of the uh, again uh, one of the popular configuration and there are certain mass spec like triple quadrupole they are based on these principles where in the first quadrupole you are scanning the ion stream and directing the ions of a selected mass to charge ratio. That mass to charge ratio uh, that selected ions is now uh, selected and that is going to get further fragmented in the collision cell uh, where you are using some collision induced dissociation based on some inert gases like argon 
And then uh, in the third quadrupole, uh, you are scanning the stream of these ion fragments which is emerging from the collision cell which generate the CID spectrum. So, therefore, uh, by utilizing these properties of mass analyzers, different type of mass spectrometry configurations have come forward. Now, I have shown you uh, this mass spec which is QTOF or quadrupole time of flight. It utilizes two different mass analyzers based on the first one is the quadrupole property and second one is the time of flight. So, not only you are uh, resolving them in the electric field, but also separating them based on the time of flight tube, uh, looking at the mass to charge ratio, how much time they, they take to separate them. And then further you have a reflectron tube which also increases the path length in the time of flight tube. So, by utilizing many of these properties, your intention is to separate resolve these ions much more accurately and much more high throughput manner to provide the much uh, deeper coverage of the proteins. A new technology which has come forward is Orbitrap technology. Orbitrap is type of mass uh, analyzer that consists of an outer barrel like electrodes and a coaxial inner spindle like electrode that form an electrostatic field with quadro logarithmic potential distribution. These ions then separate into narrow bands based on the mass to charge ratio and then they pass back and forth by the central electrode which creates a signal that can be deconvoluted to determine the individual mass to charge values which could be present and their intensities can be uh, monitored. So, in this manner one of the uh, latest technology which has come forward is orbitra fusion technology where we have uh, quadruples, ion traps and orbitraps and both ion trap and orbit trap have their own detectors as well. So, now here you know, this kind of tribal technology not only provides the highest resolution, but also provides you know multiple capability to do different type of uh, fragmentation, different ways of analysis and it opens up many type of applications by using this kind of technology. Now, the way we talked about you know the DICE technology difference in electro forces in context of uh, gel based proteomics. Similarly, when intention is to not only identify a protein, but also to quantitate them well, then technologies like eye track which is isobaric tagging for relative and absolute quantification have come forward as a very strong platform to do the quantitative proteomics. The eye track reagents, these are the multiplex reagents which are mainly amine specific stable isotopic reagents. Uh, they can label the proteins uh, by reacting on their end terminal sequence and then you can actually use 4 or 8 plex eye track or you can use even you know uh, uh, 4 to 8 comparisons uh, different biological con conditions to be compared by labeling with these type of eye track reagents. So, now after labeling them then you, these peptides could be uh, you know mixed together and now you can analyze them in the mass spec simultaneously for their identification and quantification. A similar technology like eye track has also come forward which is known as TMT or tandem mass tags even they use the same property. In both the cases you are using some isobaric tags where intention is to not to add any extra mass uh, on the protein uh, for 4 of the condition or 8 of the conditions to be compared because you do not want to change any you know extra mass from your side otherwise the differential uh, changes are not real. So, if you look at you know one of the eye track uh, 4 plex reaction uh, we have shown you here the labeling strategy in which let us say condition A, B, C and D are compared. Uh, the eye track reagent is having uh, this uh, reporter ions of 114, 115, 116 and 117 and to balance them there is a balancer region which is 31, 30, 29 and 28. Now, together they are always going to add uh, mass 145 which will be isobaric for all the 4 conditions. After labeling them now you can mix these peptides from 4 different conditions. Now, you can do further analysis in the mass spec do MS and MSMS analysis and these reporter ions will be seen at the MSMS level and now you can not only identify what is this protein, but also quantify what happens to this protein when you compare across 4 conditions. So, this whole field of doing quantitative proteomics using mass spectrometry is highly relevant for lot of biological applications, but it is not in the scope of this particular lecture and for this course. So, I am not talking in too much detail about it, but just, just wanted to give you the glimpse and some idea that in which way scientists are now using mass spectrometry technology for doing various quantitative based analysis. So, in today's uh, lecture in conclusions we mainly talked about mass spectrometry platform which has emerged as a very strong 
uh, you know, technology for doing the proteomics applications. Uh, we have tried to understand some of the basic components of uh, mass spectrometers, especially the ionization sources and the mass analyzers. We have also provided you some demonstration for the multi toft of technology and LC MSMS or trap based technology. Uh, and I try to, to convey you that like DAIS technology, you can also do labeling in the mass spectrometry based methods. Uh, one powerful platform is iTrack or TMT based labeling strategies, which could be utilized to do the quantitative proteomics using mass spectrometry. So, some of these are just the kind of basic uh, overview of these technologies to give you an idea and a flavor that in which way you now the protein scientists, the, uh, they are utilizing different type of technologies and platforms to study the proteins more accurately and much more high throughput manner. So, let us start our first demonstration on Maldi Toftov. Hello, I am Dr. Aishwarya Rao in charge of the Maldi facility in Professor Sanjeeva Srivastava's lab. Maldi is one such instrument which is used as a mass spectrometer. The instrument that you can see behind me is a Maldi Toftov which is called the Autoflex Speed and it is made by Bruker. The ionization source in this instrument is a smart beam laser which is used to ionize the samples. The mass analyzer in this particular instrument is called the time of flight. It separates the ions on the basis of the time the ions take to traverse a vacuum tube and therefore the name time of flight. MALDI is an acronym that stands for Matrix Assisted Laser Desorption Ionization. It is very important to understand the term matrix. The matrix is actually a chemical compound which has to be mixed with the sample. It is very important to understand what the matrix is. These are chemical compounds which are capable of absorbing the energy from the laser beam and transferring them to the sample so that the sample can get ionized. The matrices are, are chosen based on the type of sample to be analyzed. They help the sample to be ionized with minimal fragmentation. This helps the analysis of very fragile samples like DNA, proteins, sugars, polymers, etc. The samples are mixed with the matrix and loaded onto a plate. The plate that is used here is a ground steel plate. It has a number of wells demarcated on it and the samples are to be loaded inside these wells. There are different ways in which the sample and the matrix can be loaded onto the plate. One of the common methods is the called the direct droplet method. In the direct droplet method, matrix is first mixed with the sample in a tube and the resulting mixture is then loaded onto the plate. So, I would be now demonstrating this technique. The matrix is taken into a tube. After which the sample is taken in equal proportion into this tube and it is mixed externally. The mixing has to be made proper. The resulting mixture is then loaded onto the plate. While loading the mixture on the plate, care has to be taken that the tip should not touch the plate. This drop is then allowed to dry during which the sample and the matrix co-crystallizes. The laser beam would then hit these crystals and the matrix would absorb all the energy from the laser and transfer the required amount of energy to the sample to help it get ionized. Once the spot has dried completely, this plate has to be inserted inside the instrument. The sample has now to be introduced inside the instrument on top of this platform. So, the plate is placed on the platform, taking care that the north side of the plate is towards the instrument.
once the plate is placed inside the instrument with the help of a software called flex control the instrument is now operated the instrument will first have to be calibrated using certain calibrants which are standard calibrants provided by the company itself which would be placed in when any one of these wells when we calibrate the instrument we can then use it for analyzing the samples in this particular case the sample has been loaded in c5 we can see this sample in the picture that is showing up over here this is the image of the region where the sample has been loaded the crosshair can be adjusted to any region and the laser beam can be fired to that exact point once that happens the matrix will absorb all the energy from the laser and transfer it to the sample so that the sample is converted to the ions these ions can then be detected either in the linear or the reflectron mode and this kind of a graph will then be formed this spectrum is a typical pattern of a high molecular weight compound that was used this is a typical mass spectrum that is obtained for high molecular weight samples the spectrum obtained from the matrix looks like this so what you see to the right is actually all the peaks that have got high intensity in this particular spectrum so in this way maldi is a very versatile technique that can be used to study a number of small compounds intact proteins and also to establish the identity of the proteins let us start orbitrap ms demonstration session now hello everyone i am sai charan a doctoral fellow in dr sanjeeva shrivastava's lab uh, i would now take you to the basics of mass spectrometry and how you can use this instrument for different proteomics experiments the mass spectrometer basically consists of three components the ionization source the analyzer and the detector however for proteomics experiments to be carried out there is a need of an upstream component in uh, which can separate complex uh, mixtures of proteins for this we use chromatography based techniques and the most common hyphenation of mass spectrometry is with liquid chromatography so for proteomics based experiments the most widely used mass spectrometric technique is lcms which stands for liquid chromatography hyphenated with mass spectrometry i would now introduce you briefly to the different uh, components which make up an lcms setup so coming to the basic of a mass spectrometry based experiment for proteomics we have the sample of interest which is digested using a protease the most commonly used protease usually is trypsin okay and we now take a sample which has already been digested to give rise to number of peptides so say if my sample consists of thousands of proteins the addition of uh, a, a protease and digest uh, digesting the proteins with a protease would result in smaller fragments of these proteins giving rise to a very complex mixture which consists of smaller fragments of proteins that is peptides so these peptides are now in the solution form for lc based techniques you need to have the compound in the solution form so we now look into a nano lc system this is the easy nano lc 1200 setup so this is the assembly where the samples are placed as you can see there is a 48 well a uh, slot available here to place these wires so these are wires which contain the sample that is to be analyzed so inside inside the the unit is a needle which picks up the sample from the uh, designated slot and injects it into the onto the column there are two separate bottles one for washing the needle after it has picked the sample and one to discard the waste on top of the unit are two slots for the solvents that are used so solvent a contains 0.1% formic acid and solvent b contains 0.1% formic acid in 80% acn 
so these the ratio of this these solvents determines when the peptides elute out from the column so what we now see is a column a hydrophobic c18 column which is used for separating the samples of interest this is a 50 cm column which indicates the length of the column and what you see here is the end where the sample gets sprayed on into the mass spec so the nano lc setup is connected to the mass spectrometer through these silicone tubes as you can see here is the 50 cm column which i just showed you a while back okay so the sample enters into the mass spectrometer through these columns what you see here is a guard column which acts as a preventive device to make sure that the pressure does not exceed a threshold value if the pressure exceeds for any reason it can potentially damage the column so the guard column prevents any damage to the column because of high pressure so once the sample enters onto the column the gradient of the solvents from the nano lc setup is responsible for continuous elution of the peptides based on the hydrophobicity you can now understand that the more the hydrophilic a peptide the earlier it is going to come out of the column as the time progresses during a run the hydrophobicity inside also increases because the in, there is an increase in the amount of solvent b so the more hydrophobic peptides get eluted later on during the lcms run so what you see here is the camera view of the needle from the column and the formation of a spray and thus the peptides entering inside the mass spectrometer so it is at this stage that the ionization of the peptides takes place for the mass spectrometer to separate the ions and later on detect them 